Silly me. I was like, oh, we're focusing on Kabru and the party here. We're switching sides. It's going to be a simple episode, right? Like, it's not going to be too crazy, because up to this point, they kind of been a joke, a meme. Like, I said it the last time they fell. I was like, oh, you know, it's going to be kind of funny if this is like an ongoing gag where, like, we keep bumping into them somehow ahead of us, even though we should be ahead of them, and they just keep dying. Like, it's just funny. It's silly. It's goofy. And it's not that I disagree with what he did in terms of the murder frenzy. I think it makes sense, and if anything, I have respect, because the number of times I see in these stories, someone with, like, I don't care if they believe, like, okay, I don't want to actually kill this person, pretend that you will, and then, you know, hit them in the, with the back of your sword or something, you know, jump them, be scummy, because if you don't, you're just gonna have a big fight. He did that, but he did it more crazy. I did not see it coming! I was like, oh, the way this dude's talking... He'll knock them out. I don't think he was actually going to stab that fool with a trident, but then he stabbed the other fool with the- and I'm like... Little Batman over here with his detective skills is a little hostile. The thing is, is when you look at Kabru, he's almost like the polar opposite. He's like the yin to his yang of Leos. Leos with how he is, is literally the exact opposite with how Kabru is. Because Kabru, his deduction skills is actually incredibly impressive, and he's- like, pretty much on the money with how he observes things. With little bits of information, he can actually observe so much. And honestly, in any other show, he would have been the MC. I don't think many people can deny that. And had he been the MC of this show from the beginning, everything that he said about why we shouldn't trust someone like Leos or his sister in terms of the power of the dungeon, you would believe. And hell, maybe even I kind of believe it right now. But I also believe I don't trust this guy either, because the thing about Kabru is he's not evil, but I honestly feel like he's one or two steps away from actually kind of getting into that territory. He's such a chaotic neutral that, like, he's so logical and he firmly believes what he believes that one or two steps, either right or left, and he becomes the most righteous or evil character. And that fascinates me greatly. I have a full live reaction to whatever the hell I just watched with episode 14 of Delicious in Dungeon or any of these wonderful episodes over on my Patreon if you want to see my full and good thoughts. They're over there if you're interested. Let's get a couple of quick house cleaning things out of the way. New opening, new ending. New ending, in, okay, if we're just talking about songs, new ending tops new opening for me. In terms of visuals, opening. But I do like both. It was a little weird watching the opening given the kind of eldritch horror that we've been dealing with but uh you know i kind of like the fact that by the time the opening ends it kind of looks like leos waking up as if he's having a sort of pleasant dream but then the reminder that he is still in the dungeon and based on the end of the episode he ain't escaping the dungeon everything's closed off but the thing about it is the visuals were really funky really cool soft colors the song took me a bit to get into the groove of but once i did i actually came out to appreciate it but the ending song, while sure it doesn't have as much animation, it's pretty much just pictures. Those pictures were awesome, man. Like, they kind of reminded me the style of Ranking of Kings, which is one of my personal favorite shows. The way they detailed it, especially the shot I'm showing right now, just very much reminded me of Ranking of Kings. And the song was mwah, beautiful. Love it. Both of them, though, pretty damn solid. It's kind of weird, though, having what they have as an opening song for the second core after everything. I honestly feel like the first opening maybe would have fit a bit better than the second, but, you know, that's just me. But the episode was different, because the whole time I'm like, oh, is this about to change the entire formula that we've come to expect? Because I'm not sure if I'm the only one feeling this, or one of the few who are. But watching it, I was under the assumption one of two things was going to happen. We're either going to focus on Kabru's party for two or three episodes straight, get caught up to wherever they were going, or we were going to flip back and forth. Like, I'm not sure if it would be every other episode or what. And my gut reaction says, while there may be episodes, maybe there might be one more in this season, and maybe there would be another in the next season or something like that, it's not going to be a common thing, but more so, there was so much catching up to do, they needed a dedicated episode, especially given now that we know Leos' party can't go back to the surface. At least as it stands. Like, all their pathways seemingly are cut off and they're starving. So, it seems like uh, we're in a kind of made in abyss situation where it's like, we gotta keep going deeper and deeper and hope for the best. The unfortunate thing is like, similar to made in abyss, the objective probably is at the end of the dungeon, the, the dark tunnel that they have to go down, because that's probably where the sister is. I mean, I showed the new poster last week and, uh, yeah, that, that wasn't a happy-go-lucky fun times poster. That was 
that was Eldritch Horror. Like, that's really what it was. And I knew these characters were coming back because they were in the poster. I just wasn't sure what. The thing is, is everything that this man said about the dungeon in terms of who you would trust with, you know, all this kind of power at the end of the day. I don't really expect that I would trust Leos with it either. Like, that's the thing. Like, everything he says, it's like 90 or 95% accurate. But it's like, it's the way he's so confident, and there's something about the way he perceives things that it's like... I really feel like he's one or two steps away from being an evil character. Not that he's evil as it stands, it's just he's firm in his beliefs. And that's a little frightening because he has a really good way at explaining things, and you could see how he could sway so many with simple phrases. And it's fascinating, I really think he would have been the MC had we been in any other show or the author decided to write it a bit differently. The fascinating thing is that this is a world where I don't feel like the author had to do much more with the world building, characterization, or even comprehension of what's going on with this dungeon, but they did it anyway. I mean, no one with a straight face can say they walked into episode 14 assuming that we were going to get, you know, this man and his party and everything like this, and it was going to kind of once again reshape what we thought about where the story was going. These were literally joke and meme like characters. We were laughing when they were dead because somehow they just keep dying and getting ahead of us. Now it's like, oh shit, if, we, if they actually catch up to us, we're gonna be throwing hands and uh, people are gonna die. The thing too is sure, people can be brought back from the dead. That is true. This man killed them and threw their bodies in the lake. Ain't no one retrieving those bodies. They dead dead. And I'm like, that's ice cold. And the thing is, is he has a compass. Like, he's like, okay, take the food. We're not gonna, like, steal their actual shit, We're, because then we'll be no better. He has his code, and whether you agree with his moral code or not, it remains the same. He's not someone who doesn't think things through. And I think that's the thing that kind of freaks me out about him the most, but makes me so fascinated, because I'm like, the fuck this guy gonna do in the future? I don't know, but, um... This might be more shocking to me than maybe even the stuff with the sister, because the sister is all stuff that I assumed would happen. The shocking stuff was like, it happened sooner than expected. But it's so interesting how they go about directing this world and its characters. And the end of the episode was awesome, because they were about to throw hands with this giant water serpent, and then Buddy with a samurai and his waifus come in, thick thighs save lives, and just all's well that ends well and it seems like they're gonna be journeying together and honestly i don't know because like obviously they all go deeper into the the dungeon gonna be new threats this and that and then by the end of the core based on the poster do we reach satan's laboratory big throwdown do we have to fight the scissor because the scissor's the dragon right like that's the thing and i don't know like as soon as we saved the sister before shit hit the fan my thought was like you know if you start the show off with trying to rescue the sister and then you end with having to kill the sister in dragon form or something. That would be, like, twisted but poetic. And I kind of feel like we're getting more and more into a situation like that. Either way, Delicious in Dungeon was one of my personal favorites of last season. And I don't think that's going to change with this season either. Well, let me know what you thought of this week's episode, theories, and speculations. If you got any down below, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around. Of course, ring that bell so you can know if I went up a little more. And like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on my Patreon. And hey, while over there, I'll just give you a video shout out. So today, we've got VNOA, Eve, Sutney, Chagumon, EB, Adam Johnson, and Silent Ghost. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.